Welcome, everyone. Thanks for hanging around, skipping lunch, or running over after, or delaying your lunch. I appreciate it. My name is Bill Elric. Uh, I'm with the Hydrogen Fuel Cell Partnership. And let's jump into this. I'm, I, for fun, titled mine The Good, the Bad, the Ugly of over two decades of experience in California with hydrogen mobility. I'm going to talk about some good, some bad, and some ugly stuff on the way, and where we think we need to go to really make this work as a really an international mobility market. So for those who don't know what the partnership is, we began in 1999 as a public-private partnership. We began as the California Fuel Cell Partnership, and I can say that just this week, yesterday, uh, after about a year and a half of, of working and trying and waiting, we have IRS designation as a new national nonprofit, which we're very excited because uh, we've been a legal, non-legal entity for a long time. Uh, we'll see what doors this opens for us. But our mission has always been, I think I have a slide here, is to create the, the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle mobility market. First in California, now our focus is how do we do this around the country? You know, we've started something in California, we think it's replicable, but we really need to start working at it. It's challenging, and we've run into a lot of challenges along the way, but we've also seen the potential. And so we bring the, the stakeholders together. We have both government and industry working together. We need, government can't do this on their own. Industry needs the support of government. You know, any new technology development is challenging. This one is upending both transportation across light, medium, and heavy duty, and the energy markets. And so it's uh, quite the undertaking. So I'm gonna talk about the, the role in global de decarbonization for hydrogen. And I wanna start with, you know, I can't, I'm gonna stand over here. Good, I'm mic'd, I don't have to stand there. I can't see that without my glasses. Um, hydrogen's necessary for decarbonization. Absolutely. We have a lot of analysis around the world that's starting to see this and the different applications. This first graphic is from the Hydrogen Council. It's a little older, but it really highlights all the different market segments and application where hydrogen as a fuel and an energy vector can help decarbonize many different markets. And we are going to need it. We have really aggressive, we have a big climate urgency to, to resolve, so we're gonna need it across all of these different platforms. We're also seeing how necessary, again, I'm very mobility focused. In California, we've been working on this for a couple of decades, that we need this across all the light, medium, and heavy duty applications. Get a lot of talk about heavy duty. We know once you start scaling up batteries, there's challenges with the weight and the ability of batteries to fulfill those marketplaces. We also know the charging infrastructure. Frankly, the vehicles, batteries or fuel cells are well developed, more or less. It's the infrastructure. That's the underlying challenge for all of this. But what we're starting to see in California and put some, some numbers to it and some analysis behind it, we're gonna need hydrogen across these markets. And you can see some of the percentages, both a, a low and high scenario of what the state's starting to, to recognize. You know, even in that light duty market, and even if it's only 10%, ultimately, that's a significant amount of fuel demand, about amount of uh, vehicles in the market, and really decarbonization potential. And so if we go to the high demand, and I'll show you what those numbers really mean, it could be 35% of the market because we have taxi and Uber drivers. We have people that like a boat or a big SUV. You know, there are a lot of light duty applications that aren't going to work for batteries. And so if we are looking at a 100% renewable decarbonized world or zero emission vehicle world, we're going to need batteries and hydrogen to complement each other across the spectrum, just like diesel and gasoline has done for a long time. And, and in the lower right is a, a graph from CARB. It is now a few years old, but they were one of the first to recognize the California Air Resources Board, the regulatory board in California, um, that we would need in that light duty sector uh, quite a bit of light duty hydrogen vehicles to get to 100%. So hydrogen also can be a sustainable market around the globe, across all applications. But I'm going to talk, uh, you know, here again is from the Hydrogen Council. This is from more than 
almost two years ago now, but a year and a half ago before the hubs really started to spur a lot of, of excitement uh, globally, there was already a lot of activity that hydrogen can be a marketplace. And I say that as a guy who started in batteries, one of the challenges I see we're still struggling with on the, the charging and vehicle side for batteries is the infrastructure is going to be around the utility system. They are not business minded, they're not quite government. But what we really want is a market that's striving to innovate, to reduce costs and provide product for people the way they want it and need it. And so we need business minded. And across the different markets around the world, we're starting to see hydrogen show that potential and the investments starting to really achieve that. And again, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to do this a lot. Uh, in California, a few years ago, as we were doing the market, the state of California and the Air Resources Board took the lead on asking the question, what's the tipping point? Are we going to be subsidizing this market forever? And this was a light duty vehicle focus. And the question, or the answer was no. If the state continues to support light duty market, within a decade, it can reach a sustainable marketplace, meaning the fuel, the vehicle, the infrastructure will have scaled up enough that the costs are competitive with anything else on the market. And you can see that's the upper graph there. The lower graph really shows that the role for government is to incentivize the market, get it going. But the real investment is going to come from industry. And we need those two to work together because you need industry, or I'm sorry, you need government to incentivize the first movers because nobody's making money at the beginning so that they see the long-term commitment and the places they can invest to create, again, a sustainable market. So hydrogen's role also needs a grand and inclusive vision. What's our big north star, to borrow again from the Hydrogen Council, that we're always aiming for? Because again, if we're aiming for decarbonization, if we've figured out it can be a sustainable marketplace, what is that image so that we're all moving the same direction? I'll give an example of just something that recently came out, and that's the clean freight strategy on the national side. It's really exciting to see this. It's less than a month old or so. If you, if you haven't seen it, it's super exciting. And, and there's four phases, and I've just shown you the, the first and the fourth. And the focus there is, you know, we start in some of these early hubs or corridors, but these little markets, and we grow to phase four, which is we need for heavy duty trucks, a national network of stations because trucks go everywhere. And the reason I wanted to point this out is I think it's absolutely fantastic. We're seeing on the national and the federal side this kind of strategy come around, but it's backwards. For the last, well, in 2021, we released the uh, document in California that was focused on how do we start up and grow the fuel cell truck market. And they very quickly, meaning fleets, vehicle manufacturers, infrastructure providers said, the way the trucking market works is, yes, you can start at your little hub facility and deploy a few vehicles, but that's a lot of money. What we need to see is the entire system so I can deploy trucks, do the operation, get the job done. And you know, nine times out of 10, it's just gonna be back and forth. So we can build for that. But guess what? That 10th time, I'm taking that route from the port of LA not to San Francisco, but I'm going to Arizona or Utah or somewhere else. And if you don't have the whole network developed, I've lost business. And if you're telling me to invest in that initial project without seeing the end goal in mind, I'm going to wait. Maybe you'll give me money and I'll be one of the first movers, but everybody else is going to step aside and say, I'll see those first ones. So that clean freight strategy is right. We will start in these small areas, and I'm going to go back. We will start in a few places first but we need to commit to the big picture. If we want the fleets to say yes, we want the manufacturers and the infrastructure developers to make the investments to scale that market up, to bring costs down and make this viable, they need that policy signal, that commitment for the end goal, Oop. for that end goal, and then we can make those first investments. And that, that upper map with the yellow lines is something from that document, we immediately started to say, we needed this big national network. And so we've talked to and said, yeah, hubs are great. Early corridors are great. 
but let's get a commitment to this network. And very specifically, what it came to is something like the NEVI program with an H, National Hydrogen Electric Infrastructure Program. And then we can see regional get really excited, not just California and Texas and kind of the first mover markets, but Iowa's gonna raise their hand and say, look where I am, I'm in the crossroads of America. I see the big image, I see the commitment. I'm willing to make commitments. I'm willing to play a role. Otherwise, if they just see those first movers, they're gonna wait. So we need a grand vision that needs to include all of these things. It also needs to be inclusive across the applications for mobility. And I'm gonna say more broadly, you know, anything in stationary supports mobility. Advancements in hydrogen mobility support stationary and other applications. But specifically in mobility, two things. First, I want to focus on, again, the analysis coming out of California is that we need to have a big target, that big vision. And we're still working on this with the state, but some of the numbers that are going to, to likely be published soon are really something else. And the idea is if we can then know what our targets are, you know, electrify everything is the battery side. Does it tell you how many of anything? No, but it's this over-encompassing, exciting vision that everybody's committed to. So people are investing around it. We need both that big vision and some specific targets, and it needs to include all of the different elements and pieces and applications. And then in the center there is, is our kind of our synergy image. When we look at trucking, we're really excited because trucks use a lot of fuel. There's a great opportunity to drive the fuel costs down. However, there aren't many vehicles sold on the heavy duty side a year. There aren't many stations needed. So we don't see the stacks in the vehicles or the equipment at the station costs come down. Light duty or the opposite. Very little fuel demand, but a lot of stations and a lot of fuel cell stacks. So together they bring costs down. So small growth in both help the other. Large growth in both really drive the other forward. So we need to be inclusive and have a greater vision. We also need milestones, and I've touched upon some of this along the way. You know, we have to, we have this big vision in California. This is that document I was telling about. They recognized right away on the heavy duty truck side that, yeah, we're gonna start some stuff in California, but we need to see, you know, first the first, I'm gonna jump ahead. Um, the lower is a recent legislative, how many trucks, how, how will we do ZEB trucks, batteries and fuel cells? One of the things they recognize, we need the initial network. We need the big vision, and then guess what, for, for trucks, we're gonna need at least 15 stations up and down the major freeways for trucks to even launch this market. And the same thing in our truck from several years ago, our truck documents say we're gonna see the regional picture. So we need first steps, mid steps, and long term. So we've gotta have big vision and the steps to get there. Same thing's happening in the light duty, you know, Frankly, we're struggling a little bit in light duty. It's been a bit, a bit of a lull because we haven't had the commitment to the bigger vision. Batteries can do it all. We're starting to see the analysis in California that that's not true. And so we're starting to resurrect and again, get to those numbers, both long-term and next steps to how do we progress. And then this requires a broad group of stakeholders. We need government to give the right signals to start us but they can't follow through. It takes private investment to finish. Private investment needs to see that first signal before they'll throw down those big investments that are gonna get us there. And I will quote one of our longtime steadfast leaders, Sunita often says, no single person can whistle a symphony. It's going to take every one of us, including now something I can say as our organization is more recognizing more and more, not just government, not just vehicle, not just infrastructure, but the communities these are based in. We need to put all this together to make this work. So I'm gonna end with kind of a little provocation here and say one of the biggest challenges and lessons learned I personally see is what approach moves this market? Really positive one that we've seen is electrify everything. Yeah, there's challenges, but let's get behind it. Creates enthusiasm, it creates investment. And some words I heard the other day Let's deploy it in the right markets. That's already boxing us in. Both of these technologies are challenging. And I know I'm speaking to a hydrogen happy audience, but really, if you flip these around either way, if you had the hydrogen everything and we'll figure out the challenges, you'd see this market open up much more. 
if you put that box around, you know, hey, I need three pillars before I deploy charging, you'd see that grind to a halt. So let's think about that as we go forward, because what we do now on the small scale and the large scale is going to tell us not only how the market develops, but how well we do our decarbonization efforts, which is what we all have in common across technologies and across stakeholders. So again, let's be very deliberate, inclusive, and focused on our next steps so we can achieve our goals. So with that, thank you very much and appreciate your time.